This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. Welcome. Today is the International Workers' Day and a good one for Nigerian workers as it is coming after President Muhammad Buhari assented to the 30,000 Naira minimum wage bill. At the 2019 celebration to commemorate the day, President Buhari was commended for prioritizing workers' welfare. The new national minimum wage, which Mr. President signed into law a few days ago, shall be fully implemented by the, by the current administration. I wish to use this platform of this year's May Day to salute the courage and tenacity of Nigerian workers in building a future of shared prosperity. I also salute our pensioners, very senior citizens, veterans, and allies for staying the course and for keeping the faith. May Day celebration is to recognize the contributions of all workers as the engine room of government. For workers, it is a day to highlight issues relating to working conditions. However, this year's celebration, which also coincides with the 100-year celebration of the International Labour Organization, ILO, in Nigeria, witnessed more commendation with a call for timely implementation of the new minimum wage. The theme for 2019 is unifying workers for social and economic development. Meanwhile, as Nigerian workers mark the International Workers' Day, issues of selflessness, hard work and diligence, as well as adequate and timely compensation are again being highlighted. Guests on NTA's current affairs program, Good Morning Nigeria, made specific reference to ineffective labor laws, casualization, and poor working conditions as some of the factors militating against the productivity of the Nigerian worker. Daniel Adirie tells us more. As Nigerians celebrate Workers' Day, the implementation of the national minimum wage is one of the issues dominating discourse. President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Ayubawaba, says the new law will be fully implemented as the 30,000 Naira figure was arrived at after exhaustive consultation. Once the law is signed into law as done by the Mr. President, it will be gazetted. I suppose by now it should have been gazetted. Once it is gazetted, justice will send it to the SGF. SGF will transmit it to the uh, Salaries and Wages Commission to do the needful, and therefore a circular will be issued to all ministries, departments, and agencies as guidelines, and it will have all of this. The issue of casualization and unlawful practices by employers was also addressed on the program. If government can give a license for people to casualize, and at the same time we now say that they are not working under the others, then there's a problem. I think we have a concerted effort to kill casualization in Nigeria. It is possible, because we will not give any license for anybody to employ for others, except there are Accelerating circumstances. Director of Productivity and Labor Standards, Ministry of Labor and Employment, Danny Neburago, explained that government is engaging the labor more closely to curb incessant strike actions by unions. What is important is that we must, when such disagreements happen, we must, we must come to the negotiation table and seek for ways and means of resolving the grievances or the disputes. This is a government, as we are told, they change agenda, we change the agenda. It must change its all to us to make it relevant to the workforce. They urged all employers and employees to work together for a more productive and prosperous Nigeria. In Abuja, Daniel Adirie, NCA News. And as workers around the globe commemorate this year's Workers' Day, Nigerian workers want government at all levels to rejig the nation's security architecture and management. Salu Abdullahi spoke to some workers at the Eagle Square, Abuja, venue of the celebration. It is May Day celebration in the nation's capital city, Abuja. Here, police personnel drawn from the conventional police mobile force, anti-terrorist, as well as the special protection units are stationed. Also on active duty are the K-9, mounted troop, anti-bomb, as well as the Federal Intelligence Bureau. The deployment is massive and adequate. The Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operations in FCT, Osman Umar, said 
throughout the period of the May Day celebration, the security of workers and infrastructural facilities within the Federal Capital Territory is guaranteed. The celebrants are coming out. They came out in mass and they're still behaving. The, our people deployed are working up to expectations. However, the workers are desirous of a similar security beyond this celebration. We need to have massive recruitment of more policemen and women. The security agencies must be properly equipped to do the job they are required to. And they must be also committed to ensure the safety of this country. John Adaji is the president of Textile Garment and Tailoring Workers Union of Nigeria and is attending the event from Kaduna State. Because of the bounties, everybody has returned to the uh, rail railway station. Increasing budgetary allocation for internal security, judiciously and transparently utilized, the workers say will not be out of place to end the menace of insecurity across the country. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Meanwhile, Ogun State government has assured the state workforce that the template for the payment of the 30,000 minimum wage in Ogun State has been laid. The state governor, Ibikunle Amonson, stated this while addressing workers at the rally held at the Moshud Abiola Stadium, Abiokuta, to commemorate the 2019 May Day in Ogun State. Correspondent Leko Agbonde reports. Workers in Ogun State, under the umbrella of the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress, converged on the main bowl of the MK Wabiola International Stadium for the rally with the governor on the dais to receive salutes. There was a palpable feeling of enthusiasm wrapped up in the message of hope, not only for the new minimum wage, but for the good news of adequate welfare and payment of allowances and deductions as announced by the governor. I promise that I will not, and I meant it when I said it, that I will not do anything. The leadership of the workforce expressed resolve to engender cordial relationship between the government and workers to enhance improved productivity, efficiency, dignity of labor, and overall development of the economy. The theme for this year's celebration is another hundred years of struggle for jobs, dignity, and social justice in Nigeria. In Abeokuta, Lekon Albonde, NT News. Still on Workers' Day celebration, the president of the NLC, Comrade Ayuba Waba, has called for unity of purpose in the fight for welfare of workers in Kogi State. He said that this in a message to the 7th Delegate Conference of the Congress in Lokoja, Kogi State capital. Austin Anyabe has more. The 7th Delegate Conference brought together labor leaders from different bodies to take stock of how the workers have failed in the state and also to elect new leaders to pilot the affairs of labor. National President of NLC, Aiba Waba said the Congress will not rest until there is improved welfare for workers. He said with the approval of the 30,000 minimum wage by the President, it is expected that states should begin to work out modalities for payment. Chairman of the NLC in Kogi State, Comrade Onu Edoka, and that of the Trade Union Congress decried the non-payment of worker salaries in the states. The salary, which they said, ranged from seven to 36 months as I leave bonus. They also called on the state government to look into the plight of the judiciary workers who have not been paid for months. Governor Yabelu, represented by the Chief of Staff, Edward Odoja, commended workers for their understanding, but maintained that government has not misused the bailout funds received. He assured that as soon as government receives the balance of 32 billion naira bailout funds being awaited, salary at real shall be cleared. The governor pledged accountability in the payment if received as a committee involving government, labor and civil society shall be instituted. Newly elected executive members were inaugurated by the NLC president in Lokuja and Austin Anyebe, NT News. In the same vein, President of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, has congratulated Nigerian workers for their tireless contribution to the social economic development of the country in spite of fluctuating economic realities. Saraki, in a message of goodwill to mark the 2019 Workers' Day celebration, signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Yusuf Olain 
Olani Yonu, also commended the leadership and members of the organized labor for their patriotism in often choosing dialogue rather than industrial action in resolving trade disputes. He expressed hope that workers will be encouraged to always put in their best in working to uplift and sustain the nation's economy in view of the recent signing into law of a new minimum wage of 30,000 naira. He noted that all that is left is to adequately harness their abundant talents and spirit of patriotism to further improve on the nation's economic and political development through timely and adequate motivation, training and retraining. Away from workers, this celebration now. The collapse of another two-story building under construction along Ileyele Jericho Axis of Ibadan has been described as unfortunate. Although no life was lost, workers on site were said to have suffered various degrees of injuries, with three said to be badly injured. Ayomi Kung Ajibola brings a report. No fewer than eight construction workers sustained injuries on Tuesday in Ibadan when the two-story building collapsed. Though no one was reportedly dead in the incidents, it was learned that three workers amongst the eight were badly injured as one of them was trapped for about an hour under the rumble before he was rescued. When they were loading, they were doing the uh, taking, all of a sudden we heard a cracking sound and then and a, lo a loud noise from the people that were there. So by the time we got there, we saw that people, there were casualties and they were rushed to the hospital. Nobody died. The site electrical engineer who spoke off camera dismissed the rumor that the materials used for the building were substandard. The task force of Oyo State Bureau for Physical Planning and Development Control had already sealed off the building. It will be recalled that a story building had collapsed in Shogoye area of Ibadan on March 15, 2019. In Ibadan, Ayomiku Ajibola, NTA News. Let's now join Ruth in Lagos for more news on Nationwide. Happy Workers' Day, Ruth. Over to you. Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Lagos. Happy Workers' Day to you, too. Nigerian workers in Lagos celebrated the 2019 Workers' Day with emphasis on uniting workers for social and economic advancement. Ken Igbelugé, who witnessed the celebration at the Agege Stadium, reports that the new minimum wage of 30,000 naira was commended by the workers. For workers in Lagos State, May Day is a day to bring their demands to the front burner. It also provides an opportunity to demand for better welfare and working conditions. It was not surprising that they rolled out the drums to celebrate the day. What we have been doing to set work to sustain our life. The salaries are paid as at 20, even before the end of every month. Every worker has attested to this. And for this, we give kudos to this government. The governor of Lagos State, Akiwumi Ambode, represented at the event, called for continual support at repositioning the economy to move the state to the next level. We have given the people of Lagos State four productive years of sustained industrial harmony. This is perhaps the longest period of such in the modern history of our state. While the annual Workers' Day has proven a veritable platform to celebrate workers, the onus also lies on government and employers of labor by empowering workers to continue to improve the welfare of workers as well as protect them in the workplace. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluke, NTA News. Low level of awareness and compliance with the disability law by some government agencies and private sector has been identified as reason for poor contribution of people living with disability to national growth. Annie Daniels reports that this was the stance of people living with disability and other stakeholders at an event organized by the British Council European Union in Lagos. 
Since the assumption of office of the present administration, incremental progress has been made in several areas, including consensual efforts to alleviate the plight of people living with disabilities. One achievement in this regard is the signing into law of the Special People's Bill, which seeks to provide a comprehensive legal and policy framework for empowerment, welfare and protection of the rights of people living with disability in Lagos State. The incoming gov government in Lagos State should see to it that the structure for inclusion is probably and properly enshrined in critical areas like education, health, sports, poverty alleviation, and political participation. In most in most uh, competitions internationally, if Nigeria is not present, that uh, host country or whoever they don't like it because they know these people pull crowd. They suggest, among other things, attacking poverty among people living with disabilities and developing enterprise rather than promoting charity as possible ways of enabling people living with disabilities live out their dreams. So that people don't look at persons with disability and think they are people for charity. No, we are human beings, we are part of society. A person with disability can be a brand ambassador can be an influencer. We want people with disabilities to be endorsed. We are beautiful, we are smart, we are intelligent. With an all-inclusive government, these category of people are optimistic that the sky will indeed be their limit. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. When two giants meet, the outcome is better seen than imagined. This was the situation when representatives of a telecommunication giant, Globacom, came calling at the Lagos Network Center of the Nigerian Television Authority. Imole Ayo Tukidi tells us more. The visit by representatives of Globacom, a Nigerian multinational telecommunications company, is to understand the new program philosophy of the Lagos Network Center of the Nigerian Television Authority and seek other areas of collaboration. We are looking for platforms that will help us to reach out to, to the people. people. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you offer such a platform, <coughs> then it will be music to our ears. That's right. So willing to sit with you yeah. and listen That's to you right. and provide them the cost. It's also not the, <laughs> so the Zona director, Lawal Ahmed, while appreciating the telecom giant for appreciating the effort of Africa's largest network, NTA, to unite Nigerians through information and education, said NTA is currently building one of the largest studios in Africa, pointing out that the NTA is a window to the business world. NTA has more than 100 stations. So what NTA is doing is coming up with an application that can carry all the stations, no matter how local they are, even local government stations, so that wherever you are in this world, you can be able to watch your channel at home. We may be seem to be local, but we are thinking global. Globacom, which prides itself as grandmasters of data, promises to continually support the NTA. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. In Lagos, in Molia Yotokidi, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos. It's back to Lydia in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Ruth. Moving on now, Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Onyama has described the release of Zainab Aliyu by the Saudi authorities as another sign of international goodwill that Nigeria enjoys under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari, whose integrity is widely acknowledged. The minister, who was away on official assignment to Guinea-Bissau, when the release was affected, says all diplomatic tools were exploited at the highest level to achieve the desired results. Um, well, first of all, we're, we're delighted uh, at this uh, excellent news. Uh, we would like to thank the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, for that decision. Um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, has been uh, conducting very quiet uh, diplomacy uh, with the uh, Saudi authorities for some time now. Uh, we've provided them with uh, documentation and, um, and this has obviously led to, um, to the release, and, uh, which is a very good thing. And, um, and I think that uh, it also shows the, uh, the benefits of uh, quiet uh, diplomacy, uh, which has been conducted, uh, as opposed to um, conducting 
our foreign affairs uh, on Twitter and other social uh, media. Uh, and um, so we're very uh, happy that um, quiet diplomacy uh, has um, proven uh, its worth. All international airlines operating in Nigeria using the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport have complied with the April 30th, 2019 ultimatum to relocate to the new terminal. Emmanuel Ayimiro reports that the new international terminal is now put into full utilization. Nigeria has been moving towards achieving and meeting global aviation standards in terms of safety and security, passengers processing and service delivery in tandem with international best practices by building new terminals and equipping them with modern airport facility. And of search is the Abuja New International Terminal, which was inaugurated in December last year by President Muhammadu Buhari, who promised to make aviation a catalyst for economic growth and to do everything to place Nigeria airports among the best in the world. Today, international airlines now enjoy Abuja Airport New International Terminal, which bubbles with activities. It's really great to see this in Nigeria. It's a beautiful facility and I think it's going to be very good. Very nice to see it. First class, really very good. Mm, they are fast, those attending to uh, all passengers arriving. I pray that they will maintain the facilities well. With an annual passenger capacity of 15 million, 72 check-in counters, five baggage collection carousel, 28 immigration desks at arrival, and 16 at departure, eight passengers boarding bridges and security points. With hotel accommodation, and metro rail line for inter-border transportation, among other facilities, is the belief of efficient experts that the country is on course. We have term number international airlines. We are only hoping that more airlines in view of the facilities in, and the fact that Abuja Airport is certified, and we are the base in safety in Africa 2018, we believe with these credentials, more international flights coming into Abuja Airport. Other international airports in Nigeria are also being upgraded to meet Nigeria's aspirations in the sector. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NT News. The Northeast Zonal Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission says it has recovered over 55 million naira during the first quarter of 2019. Correspondent Nafisa Umar Garba reports that the zonal head of the commission disclosed this to journalists at a press conference. According to Michael Wetkers, the zonal head of the commission, the amount recovered which stood at 55,627,341 naira is in connection to the landed property worth 18 million forfeited to federal government. Wetkers noted that the commission received 81 petitions and convicted 14 suspects out of which eight are in connection with board buying while others counterfeit currency. Our activities are increasing in the zonal office and um, for the first quarter alone we have received up to 81 petitions and um, I think 50, 50, 70 something, over 70 of them came from the zone here while others came from the head office down to Bombay here. All these achievements were recorded by the Commission during the period of January, April this year. In Gombe, Nefisa Umar Garba, NTA News. And sequel to the successes recorded in saving costs and elimination of wastages and ghost workers through the Integrated Personnel and Payroll Information System, IPPIS, in 2007, the federal government is consolidating by sensitizing MDAs on their roles in the system. Bosede Abel reports. It is no longer news that the Integrated Personnel and Payroll Information System IP scheme has brought sanity to the payment of salaries and wages for MDAs at the federal level. Apart from ensuring prompt and regular payment of salaries, the system eliminated ghost workers and other shoddy practices of the past. 
Now the federal government wants to consolidate and improve the effectiveness in storage of personnel records and administration of monthly payroll to enhance confidence in staff payment costs and budgeting. The payroll module has led to over 250 billion naira being saved through the identification of ghost workers. Presently, there are over 700,000 staff on IPPS platform from 115 MDAs, 39 Nigerian police commands and three formations, four paramilitary agencies and, heads of, and retired heads of service and permanent secretaries. For those of you who have been in government, and of course many of you are, it is extremely difficult to start projects of this nature and sustain them for this long period of time. Currently, we have not been going since 2015 to date. Success and challenges in the implementation of IPs by solution providers and relationship between budget and budgeting system form the focus of the two-day workshop in line with the continuous public finance reforms of government. After all said and done and the deliberation so far, it is hoped that this retreat will further strengthen the full implementation of the policy. In Abuja, Bossede Abel, NT News. Preparatory to the takeoff of the new administration, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation is building the capacities of officials for flawless and result oriented memoranda for Federal Executive Council meetings. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed reports. They may be involved in handling government business for years, but then there is always room for improvement, especially with the dynamic nation of today's world. These officers are therefore being prepared by the Cabinet Affairs Office for improved drafting of memoranda for the highest decision-making body in the country in order to give Nigerians quality service delivery. The forum is also an avenue to create new templates on memo writing where officers will not only write but also track implementation of policy or project after approval by the Federal Executive Council. What you have entrusted with is a critical responsibility which requires considerable talent, training, and diligence to ensure that policy proposals that are presented to the Federal Executive Council are the most effective, efficient, and responsive options that the country can generate. The, the Cabinet Affairs Office it's a fertile learning ground, and it's a place where you become an all-rounder. Removing obstacles to service delivery is our core responsibility as civil servants. With this training, the new government coming in on May 29 is said to be run on modern trend of e-governance for quick and efficient service delivery. Ahmed Anders Ahmed, NTA News. Now time to take our first break on Nationwide. More reports when we return. Stay with us. The Kiana Traditional Council cordially invites all friends and well-wishers of the ancient kingdom of Kiana to the official installation and presentation of staff of office to His Royal Highness, Alhaji Abdullah Amigra Abu III, the Osana of Kiana and Chairman Kiana LG Traditional Council. The occasion will be performed by His Excellency, the Governor of Nasrallah State, Alhaji Tanku Umar al Makura. Date, Saturday, 4th May 2019. Venue, Four Yard of Kiana Local Government Council, Ashina, Kiana. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Come and witness this historic event in the Salt City, home of culture, tradition, commerce, and cradle of Alago history and civilization. Announcer, Mike Omeri, Obouka Kiana, and Ogonowa Nogiza, Deputy Chairman Planning Committee. <laughs> A 
Television College JAWS announces admissions into two years diploma programs in film and television production, television engineering, and broadcast journalism. The sale of forms will commence on the 13th of May and run through 30th July 2019. Admission forms can be obtained from all marketing offices, NTA State Capital Stations, Zonal Centers, or at the Office of the Academic Secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield JAWS. Applicants are required to possess five credits in GCE or SSCE in relevant areas of study in not more than two sittings, including English and mathematics. All properly completed forms attached with photocopies of credentials must be submitted on or before 30th July 2019. For further inquiries, please visit our website at ntatvc.com or call 0803-3144-383. NTA TV College, training you to be the best you want to be. Registrar announcer. The management of the Nigeria Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria cordially invites the general public to the 14th edition of the annual Ramadan lecture, which will, inshallah, hold on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The topic is tolerance in Islam to be delivered by Sheikh Mohammed Nuruddin Lemu, Director of Research and Training, the Awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust, Mina Niger State. The venue for the event is Lumana Multipurpose Hall. River Road, Jabi Road East, Gorimi Jerry, Kaduna by 9 a.m. Under the distinguished chairmanship of Lamido Adamawa, His Royal Highness Muhammad Berkindo Aliyu Mustafa, the chief host is His Excellency Malam Nasu Ahmed El Rufai, the executive governor of Kaduna State. Royal Father of the Day is His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Show Idris, CFR, Emir of Zezo. The host are Malin Yakubin Muhammad, Director General of Nigeria Television Authority, Malam Mansur Liman, Director General of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and Dr. Osta Okechuku, Director General of Voice of Nigeria. Nigeria announce our organizing committee. You are welcome. <laughs> Thanks for staying. Police parades alleged killers of Anambra community leader. Details of this and other stories with Comfort in Enugu. Over to you, Comfort. Workers in Enugu State have been assured of implementation of the new national minimum wage. This was the focus of the speech by the governor of Enugu State, Ifani Ugwani, during the International May Day celebration held at Michael Obarasko Enugu. Chiegonu Aro completes the report. 2019 May Day celebration in Enugu witnessed a large turnout of workers from all spheres of public and private services. The whole essence of this year's celebration cannot be dissociated from the issue of the implementation of the new national minimum wage and the state government stand. The governor, however, gave Enugu workers the assurance that the issue of the new national minimum wage will be comprehensively and satisfactorily implemented. That despite the daunting economic challenges, we will, in concert with relevant agencies and departments of government, ensure that these issues are comprehensively and satisfactorily addressed. Labor leaders in the states were firm in their demands for other challenges, such as offsetting the backlog of pension in the parastatals, increase of the monthly one million naira for gratuity, among others. To change the laws that establish Entraco, to make Entraco a full-fledged public corporation for the final civil subventions. We are asking for a situation where there will be a centralized system of payment of salary for parasitical workers. The 2019 Workers' Day with the theme Another 100 years of struggle for jobs, dignity, and social justice in Nigeria is a call for workers to demonstrate zeal and great sense of service delivery. In Enugu, Chiego no Aro, and Tia News. The Anambra Police Command has paraded the suspected killer of the Nemo community leader chief, Frank Anthony Iboka. The State Commission of Police paraded the suspect and others at the Police Command Headquarters, Oka. Ngozi Okekaru reports that Governor Willie Obiano commended security agencies in the state for arresting the criminals. Parading the suspect.
crime suspects. The police commissioner said the command launched an aggressive manhunt of the killers of the community leader, Chief Frank Anthony Buka, and arrested one 27-year-old Chibo Anyebu, a.k.a. Transformer, from Nimo, saying efforts are intensified to nab other three fleeing suspects. Initially, the state governor announced a reward of 5 million naira. But now, with this development, His Excellency has increased the price to 5 million per each suspect. Any suspect that has been arrested, you have a reward of 5 million naira. The command also rearrested and paraded 30 year old DK Chukwemili, alleged murderer of Pa Ilanusi, father of ex Super Eagles player Chikel Ilanusi, earlier nabbed, but escaped with handcuff in 2014 after jumping down from a three story building. Other suspects paraded include 10 armed robbers, 16 one chance robbery syndicates, four suspected car snatchers, and 231 suspected cultists. Exhibits recovered include two AK-47 rifles, other arms and ammunitions suspected to be cannabis sativa. Two Toyota Corolla vehicles stolen at gunpoint were also recovered, among others. Parents taking care of your children, know where your children are headed every time. Ask questions. And when your child that you know is not working begins to display some form of wealth, Better ask very closely. The commissioner said the suspects will be charged to court after investigations. Idoka Ngozi Ukekaru, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Enugu is back to Lydia in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thanks, Comfort. The minister for Works, Power and Housing, Raji Fashola, has reiterated President Mohamed Buhari's resolve to continue his inclusive governance towards revamping the nation's economy. Raji Fashola stated this while inspecting some federal projects in Kwara State. Deborah Agbola has the details. Inspected projects include the 40 blocks of 80 housing units at Aliara in Ilori and Ilori Omaro Kaba Road. Having expressed optimism that the project will be completed in time and to specifications, Raji Fashola emphasized President Muhammad Obuare's intention to ensure that Nigerians benefit from every stage of nation building as a recovery and economic growing process promised during his electioneering campaign. When President Buhari says that his government is building a, at least one road in every state, uh, it is happening and that his government is undertaking housing projects in 34 states is happening. That was our campaign message, and that we will continue. Now, this is one of those roads in Kwara State. We are happy that the quality and the materials are from a lorry here, not from any other place. In an interactive session with controllers of works in the Federation, Raji Fashola enjoined the officers to be resourceful, diligent in their service to the nation, treat public issues with sensitivity, be determined to succeed, and also represents the government as expected by reflecting appropriately the intention of the federal government in the discharge of their duties. Deborah Agbola, NTA News. Our next story from Dutse says the federal government says no part of the country will be left behind in the execution of infrastructural development projects as promised by President Muhammad Buhari during electioneering campaigns. Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Bello Dambazao stated this while inaugurating some federal projects at Federal University, Dutse, Jigawa State. Awal Mohamed Kazauri has details. The federal government has, through the Ecological Fund Office, awarded the contract for the erosion and flood control as well as road network at the Federal University Dutse in August 2018, which has been delivered within the completion period. The project covered about 4.5 kilometers of internal campus road with the needed drainages to avoid flooding. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Bello Dambazau, says the project is one of the ecological intervention projects approved by the Federal Executive Council for the first quarter of 2018. He restated government's commitment in tackling environmental challenges in the country and makes life more meaningful to the people. The intention of this project is in keeping faith with the present administration's promise that no part of the country will suffer any neglect 
owing to its geographical location or political constellation. We established a fire service unit. We, however, have a pressing problem, which is that of firefighting equipment, which includes fire trucks and a fire station building. Governor Muhammad Badaru Abubakar, represented by his deputy Ibrahim Hassan, appreciated the federal government presence in the state. In Duse, Awal Muhammad Kazauri, NTA News. Lobbying or consultations is a global practice that has played out for many countries' democracies around the world. This discussance on NTA's current affairs program Tuesday Life Say is a strategy the All Progressives Congress APC, leadership of the 9th. National Assembly will adopt. Talatu Izrike has more. It is a common global parliamentary practice that the minority has the right to express, while the majority takes it all. Those against it, nay, yes, I will. A start many expect to play out in the leadership of the Ninth Assembly, given that the All Progressives Congress (APC) has the majority of members in the two houses. Already, the party has made its endorsement in its zoning bid to advance equity and justice. These APC stalwarts say is followed by consultations in carrying everyone along to consolidate on democratic gains. Sometimes they say minority views may be louder than even the majority voice, but we know what we're doing. Okay. We've already declared, Plato has declared, in the, North Central, the entire North Central Zone has declared, Many of the zones have declined. We are now trying to see the dissenting voices. But at that time, that is where discipline will come in. Okay. And when people say, you are not going to discipline, what is the purpose of party? Party has a constitution. Party has a reason for discipline. Those who want to see rancorous exercise during the election of uh, the leadership election assembly will be disappointed. By the time we get to the day of inauguration, we'll come together and make sure we deliver these people deliver him alone as the Senate President and deliver Femi as the Speaker. The leadership of the party is trying to galvanize everybody to have this common focus so that all the foci will be focused on one point and that's what's going on. It's consultation, consultation, cons consultation, consolidation, 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 then we arrive at the consensus. For others, no room for loopholes to avoid past mistakes. Every person who is aspiring for any particular uh, presiding officer position must be supported by the majority of political party. And in the event that anybody decides to do otherwise, then of course the supremacy of the party and then the will of the Nigerian people must really come to force. There was high level of discipline within the ruling party. Without a party platform, you are nobody in the National Assembly. Analysts strongly believe that good governance lies largely on right actions, advocating the revisit of past political culture that stood the nation out. Talat Ezerike, NTA News. Many thanks, Talatu. Sokoto Network Center is next on our lineup, and Asmao will give us an update from that zone. Good to see you, Asmao. Good to see you too, Lydia. Good afternoon and welcome to Sokoto on Nationwide News. As International Workers' Day is celebrated today, some pensioners in Sokoto call for upward review of their pensions to improve their living condition. Elhata Abdullah, he completes the report. The pleasure of civil service is not only remuneration on a monthly basis, but improvement of welfare packages from time to time. I am too old. Life is becoming more unbearable with only 4,400 naira as monthly pensions to cater for my family daily needs. I depend on assistance from philanthropists to meet daily needs, including health care services. Maman Kebe is another pensioner who retired about 30 years ago 
as a forestry officer under the agri department. After retirement, my pension has been 14,000 naira monthly. But I, however, missed verification being conducted about four years ago. And since then, my monthly pensions had not been accredited to my bank account. I was advised to go for verification in Abuja. Since then, life has not been easy to me as an aged retiree. They therefore appealed for urgent intervention from the Sokoto state government. Governor Amin Wazire Tambol pledged to uplift the welfare of civil servants in the state. The upliftment of the welfare of the entire citizenry is hardly attainable without a strong and vibrant arm of civil servants. The Nigeria Labour Congress in the state called for full implementation of the new national minimum wage. In Sokoto, Dalato Abdullahi, NTA News. The International Labour Organization estimates that in Nigeria about 14 million children between the ages of 5 to 14 are involved in a form of economic activity or the other that includes street hawking. In this report, Sadia Umar Digik examines the cause and implication of street hawking by children. Street hawking by children is common in Nigerian cities where the minors sell such at water and granotes, among other items. These school aid children are common sites in filling stations and marketplaces hawking. Street hawking by children has huge implications on the children's physical and emotional well-being. It exposes them to sexual abuse, physical exhaustion and vehicle accidents, among others. We have this issue of uh, school dropout. Most especially discover that children who uh, may be under this condition of street walking, they are finding it very difficult to cope, or to cope with the challenges of uh, being uh, in a school and at the same time street, street walking. You discover that they either find it very difficult to meet up with the school demands. Despite the emotional trauma and physical dangers these vulnerable children face on the streets hawking, little is being done to protect them or to discourage the practice. Experts say poverty alleviation, health education and protective child rights policies would decrease the prevalence of child street hawking. And that's our contribution from Sokoto is back to Lydia in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Many thanks, Asmao. In the process of nation building, the citizenry, particularly the youth, play a major role in fostering development in key sectors of the economy, like the creative industry. But Factors such as lack of empowerment and access to proper tutelage and education constitute major bottlenecks in the advancement of the industry. This has prompted the introduction of a monthly workshop organized by the Eugenia Abu Media Center, which is aimed at teaching, mentoring, and equipping youths with the right intellectual tools for societal impact. Ekemini Williams has the report. I, I just feel blessed by God. Speech-making or screenwriting, glamorous as it may look, requires a deep level of dexterity and intellect, but more importantly, a measurable level of courage. And Vivian Obilom, a young broadcaster, seemed a little shy when she was asked her long-term plan in the industry. The inscription on the wall, if you don't train them, don't blame them, speak volumes of why young men and women, just like Vivian, are gathered in the Eugenia Abu Media Center. It is a monthly mentorship program for youths with interest in the creative industry, tagged Creative Fist, organized by the Eugenia Abu Media Center. The event aims at educating young creative entrepreneurs on the dynamics of staying relevant in the industry. The program featuring Nollywood actor Shegun Arinze took quite an interesting and interactive form with each participant taking turns in sharing their experience in their various fields and giving their various expectations. My motivation was the fact that I found that a lot of young people believe they woke up like this. Nobody wakes up like this. You can't, it's wishful thinking if you think you just wake up and turn on your bed and you become Kate Henshaw. I'll be a nobody. 
Now, President Muhammad Buhari has commiserated with the Omoti family, government, and people of Edo State, leadership of the Nigerian Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, Form 1, and the entire Nigerian Muslim Ummah on the passing of Haji Amina Omoti, a statement signed by Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Gariba Shehu, noted that President Buhari believes that as national Amira of Form 1 and devout religious leader, Hadja Omoti will be fondly remembered and honored for promoting spirituality and decency among Nigerian Muslim Ummah, as well as religious tolerance in the country, affirming that Hadja Omoti served her religious community with dignity, diligence, and courage. The president paid tribute to her invaluable contributions to nation building, including rallying Nigerian Muslim women to fulfill their God-giving roles in building the family and, by extension, the nation. President Buhari prays for the repose of the soul of the deceased and a last divine comfort for all who mourn her. Another break beckons. Nationwide continues in a bit. Don't go away. When you think about hospitality and affordable luxury away from home, then you talk about Sharon Ultimate Hotels, a secured and serene environment that offers kingly services such as 24-hour room service, impeccable security with CCTV surveillance, parking lot, free Wi-Fi internet service, free complimentary breakfast, restaurants that offers continental and local dishes, well-equipped fitness center with instructors, swimming pool, 350 capacity multi-purpose hall, laundry service, pastry corner, mini mat, and our suites are breathtaking. For reservation, locate us at plot 1710 Tafawa Balewa Way, Area 3, Garikia, Buja. Sharon Ultimate Hotels, the ultimate place. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can beat the rich. The family of Nze Godwin Nabifi Mwaiwe of Umojimoke Village, Iziane Ihiala Anambra State, announced the funeral ceremony of our mother, grandmother, and great grandmother, Lolo Akubunwa Flora, Ejoyo Biako Mwaiwe Ni Mwabuku, aged 81 years. Funeral arrangements, date. 2nd May 2019, visual mouse at Nzi Godwin Nabife Mwaigwe's compound, Umojimoke Village, Iziani, Kilometer 3, Olu Road, Ihiala, Anambra State. Time, 5.30 p.m. 4th May, record mouse at St. Martin of Tours Parish, Ihiala. Time, 10 a.m. Interment follows immediately at Nzi Godwin Nabife Mwaigwe's compound. 5th May, out in mouse at St. Martin of Tours Parish, Ihiala. Baisa Ifanyi Mwaigwe, for the family announcer. Now sports. Ministry of Youth and Sports Development holds reception for athletes from two federations as Casta Semenya loses, loses appeal over IAAF testosterone regulations. It's over to Amazi Marcos with details on Sports Update. <laughs> 